it's, it's, dude, Notre Dame knows they have to come in and play. Yeah. This yeah. isn't a game where you're like, oh, they're four and four. They stink. No, oh, this isn't Pitt. You know that. Absolutely. You, you yeah, got to come so. in and you got to come in and do your thing. But if you come in and play your game, not because there isn't talent with Clemson, the quarterback is going to, at some point, make a bad decision. Yeah, a thousand give percent. You a, give you a turnover. Their special teams haven't been good. Their pass rush hasn't been good due to injury. They still have their D tackles. But, yo, maybe now you can run to the edges yeah. because they don't have depth. Maybe now you can take over in the run game in the second half because their depth is hurt by injuries. Yeah, yeah. they have Barrett Carter. Yeah, they have Trotter. Like, dude, they got, ten, they got Wiggins, the kids on the back end. Their safeties have been a little questionable. It's a lot of things. And, yo, your boy Mitchell Evans, he's out for the year. Yeah, yeah. With the ACL. Yeah. So now, okay, but – Notre Dame has tight ends and spades. Dude. Oh, absolutely. Like, absolutely. Dude, that's, absolutely. That's nothing. Like, I'm sure. Notre Dame Mitchell changed Evans. tight ends like everybody else changed radio stations when they drive. And they just, oh, yeah, another All American. Another All American. <laughs> yeah, we'll change to another guy. They all 6'4, six, 6'5, six, about 240 plus. They go all run routes, catch the ball. They got break time. So I'm, go ahead, break it down. I'm the a, advantages I'm a, for both sides. Yeah. Yeah. And what you expect. Well, um, rest in peace to the, the poet and philosopher, Curse Nick Ball, also known as Takeoff. Uh, this <laughs> game is going to be big on big. That's what mm -hmm. this game is going to be. Mm -hmm. You're looking at Joe Alden company, and mm -hmm. you're looking at uh, Tyler Davis and company, and you're saying, who's going to win that battle? That determines who wins the game. When you look at everybody says Notre Dame broke Clemson, Notre Dame broke Clemson. Well, for all intents and purposes, Yes. They did not just beat Clemson. They went out there and bullied Clemson. Y'all said, hey, we're bigger than you. We're stronger than you. We're better than you. Our ice is colder than yours. We look better than you. We make more money than you. We can make a dollar quicker than you. And it, it showed. It showed. Everything mm -hmm. showed, hey, this is a better team than you all. And Clemson has struggled to recover since. And I don't think that this is the game where they get back right and recover. I mean, this mm -hmm. is a – if you want to talk about matchups and all that, we talked about how bad the Notre Dame receiving room looked um early in the year and, and when they were going through that stretch where it just seemed like everybody who put on the golden helmet with wide receiver next to their name was injured and all that and now they're getting back healthy now guys are starting to play now guys are starting to come on you talk about evans going down but we talk about <clears throat> there is a wealth of tight ends in notre dame i don't know what it is it's like every time you put on the gold helmet when you got tight end next to your name you get some of that super soldier serum injected into your veins immediately you know what I mean? Be it Michael Mayer, be it Evan, be it whoever the next in line is, be it Tremble, another guy that's playing well in the NFL and all that good stuff. There is always going to be some tight ends out of Notre Dame. And so you're looking at this, this matchup and you're saying, well, you know the Clemson's defensive line is good, but how good are they? The difference between this Clemson and the Clemson we saw in the past, Clemson of the past had depth. Clemson of the past, they didn't just throw – uh, a, a defensive line with Daquan Bowers at you. They said, oh, Daquan Bowers is tired. Get him out of there. Get Vic Beasley in the game. What? You know how terrifying that is? You know, oh, Brian Brzee. Oh, we got Dexter Lawrence for you. Oh, Dex is tired. Put Brian Brzee in. Mm -hmm. My brother in Christ, what are you doing? What are you, why are you doing this to me? This is supposed to be a football game. This is supposed to be fun. Where these big guys are not, this is not a good time. They're coming with bad intentions and pain in every sentence. What are we doing here? And so this year, they don't have that type of uh, rotation, right? I uh, love a row, row, row. He's a, he, he's a really good defensive lineman. Tyler Davis is a guy that we almost put out an APB on him earlier in the year because we was mm -hmm. looking for him. We was looking for him, and, and he showed up. He's now shown up. Xavier Thomas was a guy that was showing up earlier in the year and all that. But – the reality is if you're going to play a full game where your defense is the group that sets the tone and makes it happen, offense can do it really right one time and they get to get off the field, right? You do it right one time. Trust mm -hmm. me. I, I know. I watched the Notre Dame game first play out of the, uh, the, the thunder and lightning delay, 80 yard touchdown. They get off the field. Right. However, a defense, you got to do it right again and again and again and again in order to get it right, which means you need depth. You need multiple guys. You need to have a situation where more than just your starters can get it done. I don't think that that um, Clemson has that. I think Wiggins is a little overrated on the outside. 
Mm -hmm. I think that this is a situation where Sam Hartman is, again, he's he's kind of playing in a situation where one arm is tied behind his back, but he's doing the best that he can, and he's got a, a supporting cast, best offensive line he's ever played with. Wide receiver cord, not quite there in terms of best he's ever played with, but they're still good. Tight end room, we've talked about ad nauseum. And then defensively for Notre Dame, I don't see a world where K. Klubnick and company can generate enough points. That running game can be dominant enough for it to make sense to say, hey, they're going to do good things against Notre Dame's defense consistently enough to win this game. But wow. This, oh. this, Go I'm ahead, Les. You made a good point. See, I heard it right there. My thing is we bring Sam Hartman in. You mm -hmm. mentioned the receiver room not being right there, but that's where Sam is supposed to make us right there. Yeah. Yeah, but but he can. We we talked about earlier the, uh, the the fact of the matter is he needs to be able to make checks at the line, which Freeman has said I don't give him the freedom to do. Which is like that's crazy. That's one of his. It's like bringing Lamar Jackson into your offense and saying, "All right, brother, don't run the ball more than four times a game." What are you doing? <laughs> it's part of what. It's part of him. It's part of who he is. It's like bringing in Big Ben Roethlisberger saying, "Don't take too many deep shots." It's part of who they are. And if hey, you left. That, he's basically. He's, you, I know what my. I know what he's doing. See, because I know him now. Uh -oh. I know him. Dude, we got this connection. <laughs> <I'm>, it, <laughs> see, he used oh. Lamar. He used Lamar as an example, but he's really trolling me about Luke Getsy <laughs> and Justin Fields. That's what he's doing. I know him. I know him too good. Now, I, I know him. I know him. But the but the but the checks at the line doesn't doesn't come with him making six thousand uh, or six receivers a thousand yards each. That's yeah. more than checks at a line. Oh, Sam man. Hartman's impact is not as is not what was advertised when we signed up for it for those three games, and yeah. just that goes back to where's the where's the Heisman highlight? Where's the transfer highlight moment where we're like, man. Thank goodness we had Sam Hartman on this football team because without him, we wouldn't be there. I can't find one yet. So let me give you that pushback of this. Watch all of Sam Hartman's highlight. And don't, don't watch the highlight. See where the highlight is. Find out where the highlight is in that game. And I want you to go watch the pre-snap stuff. Because I'm guaranteeing you nine times out of ten, he's walking up to the line saying, hey, this is what we need to do. This is how we need to do it. This is what needs to happen. And he's giving a check to that office. Don't get me wrong. A.T. Perry was a bad man, right? Moran was, was a bad nice. boy. He was nice. Yeah, A.T. Perry was a bad, bad boy. Man. Robeson, Ja'Cory Robeson. They, they, they had some bad, bad dudes over there. I'm I'm not – hey, I give you that. But a lot of that, all those guys getting a 1,000 yards, was him having the ability. They, they call that Wake Forest offense the long mesh RPO offense. They call it that for a reason. Everything is in the quarter, quarterback's hands for longer than normal. Longer than advertised. Everything is you figure it out. We trust you to make the play. If you're really good, we'll be really good. If you're really bad, we'll be really bad, which is what we saw in in pretty much in spades while he was at Wake Forest. And I I understand where Marcus Freeman is coming from in terms of like, we don't want you to have a situation where if you're struggling, we struggle as a team because our offense is predicated and built around you having, you know, basically 80% control of making it happen. But there has to be a happy medium. Like, we got to have something between 80% and 20%. Let, let's work this thing out to where it's like, Sam, if you see this, this, and this, we'll go for it. And if you're successful with it, we'll let you roll. We'll let you rock. But to me, I'm a believer that if you have a six-year guy, you have a fifth-year guy, it has to be I give you the freedom to roam and reign, and abuse leads to restriction. If you abuse that freedom, if you make a terrible check, if they got a five-man box and we got six in six to block – and you're checking out of a run to throw it deep and it gets picked off, okay, we're going to rein you back. But in before that, I need to see you abuse that power first because you've yeah. used your powers much more for good than for nonsense while you were at Wake Forest. So maybe let's give you that, and if you can't do it, we'll we'll take you out of that situation. But that's just, you know, it's, it's a really unfortunate situation that Tommy Reese, who bought him in, and who we know, Tommy Reese was the king of letting you cook at the, cook at the line of scrimmage, He's now at Alabama, and it's like he's got quarterbacks that can't cook at the line of scrimmage. Notre Dame doesn't want you to cook at the line of scrimmage, and Wake Forest is left with Mitch Griffiths. Everybody lost this. <laughs> this is, you know, we were talking about a trade earlier, and this is why these teams need people like us to talk about a trade to get this thing worked out. 
to make Absolutely. sure that they work out for everybody because it seems like, you know, everybody just got a little bit worse out of Sam Hartman leaving Notre Dame, which is really unfortunate. 